I wonder if you could help me further understanding Bayesian probability. Um, this idea of an or prior um, seems to me to not make sense um, because it's, um, it's saying it's a prior uh, guess, belief about how likely something is without any evidence. Mm -hmm. So to take your cheese maker example, the, the, um, the, the prior you know, idea that there's a cheese maker given no data. And it just seems to me impossible um, to do. I'm sort of thinking from a Wittgensteinian perspective, you know, just um, the concept of a cheese maker just comes from the world of where there's cheese and, and things like that. So, so in the, all these Bayesian equations where you've got the, the prior possibility, the prior uh, probability of God without any evidence, it just seems to me that's, that's just utterly guessable, you know, 0.5, you know. Well, if you really, th I mean, I think if you really think that there's no probability that can be assigned to, um, you know, there being a god with a cheese fetish prior to any evidence, it's very hard to think that there's a probability right now. I mean, how probable do you think it is right, you know? We well, know that, that might, that the probability would be based on my um, experience of, you know, the the amount of cheese perhaps or in the world, but, but it wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to make a judgment with no data, but that's what this Bayesian thing wants me to do. It's included in the equation, the probability of TI, of theory I, without any data. And I, I just think that's just a sort of... I mean, it's a bit wacky, thing. isn't it? Anyway, to, you know, it's, yeah. you're thinking, but you're comfortable making a probability, you think you're, you're totally comfortable making a probability judgment right now. We see the cheese, okay, it's zero point, yeah, but that's based One. on data. So I might, I, might, I might be able to, but I, I wouldn't. I'm asking you to make a judgment on a supernatural being with a cheese fetish now. We see cheese. That's your data. I mean, it's not like we're that much better off. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're t are you telling me you're comfortable with giving that 0 0.1? I'm, I'm actually not comfortable with that either. Cause okay, I, so, yeah. I mean, so, you know, um, I, 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 so, I, so I... I I'd like to know what you are and aren't, so there are more pervasive kinds of discomforts. Mm. I, I find it a little weird to, for someone to be comfortable giving, giving, giving a perhaps somewhat vague probability to a supernatural being with a cheese fetish, given the existence of cheese, but thinking somehow, before I knew whether it was cheese or not, uh, assigning a probability was really hard. I, I, it doesn't seem structurally that different. No, I think, I think both are hard. I think... It's just, it's just assuming that on the ch we've got in the whole chocolate bar, you know, we just know everything. I mean, no, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not saying we know. I mean, the whole idea is we don't know everything. I mean, we're we're assigned. I mean, the subjective Bayesian, in a way, is uh, has a bit of Wittgensteinian a rationalism where that's just how you are. There's no, you know, your spade is turned in that direction. You're the kind of guy that finds that. Plausible. You're the kind of guy that finds that implausible. It's the subjective, but you've got to understand the subjective Bayesian is just thinking this all bottoms out in what we find plausible and what we don't. That's it. Okay. So it's not, it's not as yeah. rationalist as you're thinking. I mean, the subjective yeah. Bayesian is very irrationalist okay. and thinks the way things are bottoming out basically is just how plausible we find various combinations of hypotheses where they don't have any ultimate justification or can't even be evaluated for propriety or not. So I do think it's important to understand that, uh, at least in the subjective Bayesian version of this, it's, it's you know, there's not, not a hint of rationalism in a way, you know. I found the discussion of mad dog atheism or, or, or not, uh, Interesting, but, but didn't quite get to the core, at least of my situation, qua atheist. And, and the, the reason is this. I'm very unclear as to when... Uh, sorry, there's a saying, I forget who said it, a, super, a sufficiently sophisticated piece of technology will look like magic. Um, I, I don't, don't recall who said that. So there's a, for me, there's a, it seems to me a sufficiently sophisticated being would look like God. Uh, so... Uh, to even to take the example that, uh, you know, the initial configuration of the universe was, you know, mm -hmm. right up. Uh, so this could be arranged in some prior epoch. Perhaps you've got a cyclical cos cosmology in the way that Penrose supposes. 
And it would have just been engineered that way by a very advanced civilization. So, so you understand, there's virtually nothing. Yes, yeah, so it is important to the hypothesis that the initial condition, that, that's the very initial conditions of the whole of the history. My mosaic is the entire history of the natural world. So it's not, of course, if you look and it's, you know, there is, there are infinitely many epochs, and there's a configuration here and there. You know, yeah. that, no, no, that wasn't that. My, okay. This sliver was yeah, the yeah. very first stage yeah, but, but of have, the natural world is that. Sure, sure but how okay. would we ever know that? You're helping yourself by supernatural means to evidence. No, no, no. I'm have. asking you your conditional probabilities. On no, that, I'm not. On that I'm, supposition, I'm not, I'm not helping I see. Myself to I'm see. On that, on that supposition, supposition, are you a theist? Uh, that's, a, uh, that's fair game. Well... I'm just okay, okay, curious. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. I won't. But in a way, I do have a serious question here, and the question is addressed to theists more. That at what point would a supernatural being be, as it were, admissible as a god? I mean, sorry. At what point would a sufficiently powerful, omniscient, omnipotent being, but which nevertheless has some physicalistic analysis? Is there any point at which that would be admissible as a god? Now, I, I, I'm not particularly addressing that question to you, but I would address it to theists. Uh, for an example, take His Dark Materials, uh, the, 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 the set of novels in which there, indeed there turns out to be a god, and the whole thing is in a way physicalistically explained, and indeed that god dies. Um, so would that count as a god for theists, perhaps not a very attractive god, perhaps not the god they hope or think exists, but would, would it sort of count as a god? So, but that's a general question, and it's not right. perhaps so, for I you mean, to answer. So, there are lots of things I'm simplifying away from. I mean, one, there are a bunch of semantical issues, you know. So there's, in the literature, some people think there are mermaids. They're just fish that were mistook, but they called those fish mermaids. And that's what mermaids turned out to be. There are mermaids. They're just, you know, they're just fancy fish. And then other people think, no, it's integral to the concept mermaid. So, uh, you know, yeah, 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 so yeah. even though they tried to dub the... So, you know, there are all these metasemantical things that start feeding into... Well, well as I said, it wasn't a question to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if we're, doing, if we're literally doing the claim that there's a god, just simpliciter, and the, then... And we're doing it in a systematic Bayesian way, we'd we'd have to look at our probability space over various metasemantical stories as well as our probability space over various mosaic stories and then the combination of the metasemantics and the mosaic will generate a deliverance on the statement there's a god so there might be some metasemantical stories combined with some you know physical things where oh it turns out that the god exists is just you know this really cool guy that had a special machine that created a cosmos or something. You know, I, I don't want to get it. I mean, so I was simplifying away from a whole lot. And, you know, if we're, that's why I was just trying, I wasn't coding in there's a God. I was using God as a shorthand for hypotheses that there's, you know, a non-natural being with a, with a life fetish. And I was hoping you get a fix on that without having to make a judgment as to exactly what it would take for the sentence, there's a God, to come out true. No? Um, I, I, I want to somehow, I mean, I'm not an expert in any of these things, but defend the mad dog atheist, which you so sort of uh, put in such a negative light, I felt. Um, and also sort of maybe try and argue against the idea that you can't have a discourse and convince someone of a diff to have a different uh, prior. Um, I feel that... It, you know, it, a mad dog atheist would say that something that's supernatural, by definition, cannot be a cause for something. Because I mean, anything that has a cause is, by definition, within a natural realm. So if you find the New Testament in atoms in DNA or something, then the, the, the explanation for that might be that we're all in a computer simulation and someone's doing something, but that still comes into a natural thing. The God would then become natural and not supernatural. Can I say something about by definition? Uh, the, the, throughout the history of Western philosophy, there's normally been a distinction made roughly along the lines of a contrast between nominal definition and real definition, where for something to be true by definition in a metaphysical sense is it's part of the essence of, okay? Whereas to be 
true. By normal definition, it's something along the lines of a tautology that it's true. Now, I think an atheist is just lying if they think that it's just a trivial linguistic tautology, that. I mean, it's just, it's just lying. They can't think that. I mean, it's crazy to think. It's just something along the lines of a linguistic tautology. It's like a linguistic contradiction that an, a supernatural being causes things. I mean, but if it's... If they're talking about real definition, then that's a live, it's a live hypothesis that it's of the nature of causation that it can only relate physical things. But now we're, talk that, now we're talking about metaphysical necessity versus epistemic necessity. Do, even if that is a metaphysical necessity, it doesn't mean uh, that I have to assign it a, a high probability because there's no calibration rule between metaphysical necessities and epistemic necessities. So I can't get myself into the frame of mind of taking seriously claims like, like, you know, to the effect... I mean, you were sort of half suggesting it's like bachelors are unmarried. Uh, you know, only physical... Th I, mean, really? I mean, you really think that? Is it really like all... I mean, there are, you know, if you, there, there aren't philosophers, you know, there aren't really intelligent people throughout the whole history of, you know... For most of human history, people have been saying the opposite. I mean, it's just, I mean, is it like they didn't understand the words they were using for more of most of human history when they said non-natural beings are causing things? I mean, it's just, it's not plausible that it the, has the same status as bachelors or unmarried. It might turn out to be part of the ultimate nature of causation that it can only relate physical things, but I think it's very hard, even if it might turn out that way, to turn that into some... Uh, uh, into some rule as to how we calibrate our, our, our credences. Anyway, I was being uh, gratuitously yeah, belligerent, right. but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, just expanding a bit on the, the, the non-dot version here. I mean, uh, since you've my example, I have to take it further than Simon. You don't, you, you don't need, I don't, I don't need you to say, look, if the, if the very initial condition of the whole universe spelled out in the New Testament in Greek, you know, if the Andromeda galaxy spells out the New Testament in Greek, mm. Um, mm. that's going to have a pretty large increase in my level of credence in mm. various theories of hypotheses. I mean, lots of other hypotheses too. I might think it's more likely in some kind of computer simulation or whatever, but it's certainly going to do a lot of violence to my current take on things. But I mean, look, e I mean e even, even if you were a multiverse guy that thought that some galaxy somewhere yeah. spells out everything in every yeah. language. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. to make those theories work, yeah. I've, I've still got to have a counter probability that makes sense in that yeah. framework. And I still, see. Yeah. That, that, I, I didn't want to go take yeah. that, but I, 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 yeah. I but could I mean, get sympathetic with that too. Yeah. I just didn't want to. Yeah. But I mean, look, I mean, this is, so this is this is common to other people. John knows this perfectly well. But I think just just as a matter of the Bayesian framework. Um, uh, if, you, if you accept that some things are evidence for a hypothesis, you're just mathematically compelled to accept that other things are evidence against the hypothesis. There's no, there's no have your cake and eat it position. So, I mean, I, I, I think, the, I, I'm an atheist, I think the empirical evidence is extremely good that there is no God, but that you can't hold that position coherently without accepting that there are other ways the evidence can break, could, could have broken. Um, according to which it would be prob probable there was a god. And it's high, hard to hold that position without accepting that there are ways that the evidence could break in the future that would shift your credences a lot to... Yes, the, there was though a god. You, could be a, you could conceivably be a mad dog atheist and think it's, a, it's very unlikely on every sliver, on every mosaic, but it's even more unlikely on, on some... So you could have a, mo a mad dog model where we have got evidence for... Yeah. Extra evidence for atheism. If it had broken another way, we wouldn't have a quite. We would have had. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so, so if you like, there's, there's weak and strong mad dogism. Strong, yes. strong mad yes. dogism says that the existence of God is not impinged by empirical data. Yes. Oh, yes. I actually, there's, a, there's an extreme mad dogism which doesn't need to be labelled atheism. The extreme mad dogism says that data does not affect the probability of the existence of God. And you could hold that if you were a mad dog theist or a mad dog atheist, that is a, a weak mad dog atheism where you think that on any, on any data, the hypo probability of God is very low, but it depends but on it, But it, it wobbles, yeah, yeah. exactly. And so let's thank our speaker for a very invigorating talk. <laughs>